What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. All right, Ray. You can check him out at Destination Devi on YouTube. Definitely go and do that. You can check him out at Ray GQ on the Twitter. Uh, great follow there. Did a decent job of breaking down some wide receivers there. <laughs> um, all right, man. Let's get down to s- uh, some other questions outside of these receivers. You're a you're a guy whose roots are seated in the Devi world, uh, so you've naturally been watching these higher touted <laughs> prospects like Acres and Swift for for a long time. How do you keep yourself from building a bias towards players like that? Because, I mean, they've been up at that top for so long, and I'm not saying that it's not warranted to still have them at the top, but I feel like it's easy to fall into a trap of name name cachet and the public being so high on them. And, you know, when uh, Chubb and Sony were there, it was, oh, wait till this Swift guy gets here. He's he's so – you know. So how how do you keep yourself from – keep yourself in check, really, Especially I mean, from the Debbie perspective. It's 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 accountability, right? It's I'm not afraid to put my opinions and takes out there in the public space. And uh Twitter does a good job of keeping you accountable whether you want them to or not. Uh so for me, uh, I know that I'm on acres now, but if you go back and search Ray GQ Acres, I was his biggest hater over the summer. Like I wasn't feeling him. I said, he has to show me something in 2019. And that's after being high on him as an incoming freshman in 2017. I mean, I'm I'm not going to, it's important in this industry, in this business, not to have take lock one way or the other, right? If Jalen Rager doesn't get drafted into the fourth round this week, then I'm not going to sit here and tell people you need to take him as wide receiver too. Like uh, that would just, that's not what you, that's not, it's not being a good like conduit of information for people who really rely on us. Like uh, right. in all of us on this, like right now, like it's, it's easy as, it's easy for us to joke and talk about flip flopping and all that, but there are people who really do value our opinions, right? They really are looking towards to us for advice to help their teams. And I know a lot of people think, Oh, it's just stupid fantasy. Like, like this is what, this is real stuff for people, man. Like yeah. they, it, it's like, so to not have bias, it's it's important to kind of hold yourself accountable and put it out there. So, uh, like I said, I was a big – I did a whole show on Cam Akers not feeling him. Like, I was like, he's got to show me something in 2019. And what he did with the circumstances that were presented to him, I mean, he exceeded all of my expectations in 2019. Right. So, it's, it's tough, but you just got to cut the cord sometimes and be yeah. like, all right, this guy isn't it. All right. Well, I mean, we were, I was a big Hakeem Butler guy last year. And obviously, like you said, didn't go until a lot later. And I, you know, you got to change it. Like I had him as number one. He was my favorite dude. I love that guy. I still like him, but it, I wasn't telling anybody to be like, Hey, you better, you better spend that first round pick on him still. Like you got it. You can back that up now. Like you can still yep. get the dude. I mean, I'm still not, I'm still going to go to bat for him, but I'm not going to tell you that you need to draft him uh, in the, you know, first overall, second over, you know, whatever. Right. All right. Well, sell me, sell, sell me Cam Akers then, because I think me and Jay Wayne and Big Co. We're, we wouldn't. I would think he was. He's the last of all of the bigger dudes out of Taylor's, Dobbins, uh, Clyde Edwards, and Swift. I, I, we got Akers below those guys. I'm not sure if you do too, um, but Mm-mm. but sell me, sell me Akers. I know you. I think you have Dobbins uh, below all those dudes. Yeah, I got I got Akers three, Dobbins okay. four, Edwards Elaire five, and. Okay. Uh, well, it's it, pitch me the, big, acres. the big thing is, I mean, he's, he's a guy who had the pedigree coming in, right? He was a highly touted recruit. This was only his third year playing running back. He was a monster quarter dual threat quarterback in, in, in high school coming out of Clinton, Mississippi. Um, so the talent is all there. The physical traits and tools are all there. He went to the combine. We're going to skip the season. Went to the combine, five foot ten, two four, two seventeen, I believe, four four forty yard dash, explosive. I mean, he's built. He looks like a prototypical running back. And when you watched him in those drills, he looked probably the most fluid outside of Edwards Lair in those kind of bag agility drills. But then you go back to his production. It's a true freshman, over a thousand rushing yards, and then a sophomore season came, and it was just 
bad, like yards per carry depth. Florida State, I, we've heard and we see people talk about how bad that offensive line play was, but I don't think people truly grasp how pathetic and putrid it was. And I don't know who could have thrived back there. I mean, it is – uh, 900 plus yards of his 100 of his 1100 were after contact. Uh, his offensive line was credited, and I'm not even exaggerating, with two positive yards gained all season. That's just, I mean, I mean, what more do people, what more did we want out of Cam Akers? Uh, yeah. You know, he's every single year in college, he hit the 20, 20 reception threshold every single year. Uh, he's a durable running back. He's a three down threat. He is athletic. He's talented and he played in a shit situation. So I just say, get him to a mediocre offensive line. And I think you're looking at a star running back on your hands. I mean, it's, there's the only thing that I, that, that I kind of question about his game. He, he coughed the ball up a little bit, nowhere near the level that Jonathan Taylor did. But one of the underrated traits in Cam Akers' game that I love, I just love, is he's physical, right? He's a player who on third down, if you have to have him protect the blind side of your quarterback, he will absolutely rock defenders. Like, he is not afraid of contact. Something that I'm telling you right now, the worst running back in pass protection that I've seen outside of Chuba Hubbard is Clyde edwards Lair. If he's not out yeah, running a route suspect. on third down – it's beyond suspect. Put an APB out on that dude. He is going to get your quarterback murdered. Absolutely. He has zero interest in physical contact and engaging a defender. Cam Akers has that in his game. He's got speed. He's got versatility. I, I'm, I'm very high on Cam Akers, and that's after being low on him coming into the season. All right. Well, I can, I can appreciate that. Casey, let me jump in for, for a second. Go ahead. Um, Ray was uh, – Cam Akers sophomore year wasn't that the year that their quarterback got hurt the first game of the season the big game of the season Francois yeah did yep. I remember he hurt his knee or something that was yep. a big game versus Can't remember who they Bama, played Alabama yeah what? okay so Florida State potentially championship bound because they had the Francois yada 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 goes down week one I'm a big team momentum guy and you you maybe have championship aspirations and then you lose week one. Anytime you lose in college football, you, your chances of going goes down and then your quarterback's down too. So like you said, sophomore season wasn't there. I felt like that just took the air out of the balloon for the, for the Seminoles week one. And it just, they just never, they never recovered. Dude, never recovered. The entire coaching staff got cleaned out. It was the year after Jimbo Fisher left. It just, they just weren't and it. And it blows my mind that a team like Florida state, they don't have competent backups, you know, a competent quarterback at, to, to back up Francois. Right. How are you not recruiting legitimate offensive? It just – Clemson took the ball, baby. They were bad, 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 yeah. And bad. They stink. Yeah. There was a, that was a terrible situation, and it, and it wasn't it – was, it, was, it was hard to watch – get through all the tape on Acres because it was just like, Jesus. It is. A yeah. testament to him, he's just getting blown up and blown up in the line, so, and then all of a sudden he busts off a 60-yard touchdown run. It's, I was going to say, if you, if you want to watch three- and four-yard runs, Cam Akers is the tape for you because that's about all you're getting outside yeah, then, the then, Boise Then there'll State. be like one great run on there where he does it himself and takes off. Yep. Yep. And uh, I would, I would say he might. Maybe he seeks out contact a little too much, for my yeah. taste. Yeah, like he, 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 sometimes he's learn. running into the back of people and then running, running, running into con. Like maybe, maybe tone it down a hair. He's, he's going to have to learn. He's going to yeah. have to. But that's all coachable stuff, right? Sure. That's that's sure. stuff that will, will he'll get better at his time. I mean, hell, even Ronald Jones looked better this year than he did yeah. his his first year in the NFL. Yeah, we talked about Miles Sanders last week, which I think um, I feel kind of Cam Akers is a little bit like Miles Sanders in where he, he might, I feel like maybe he still has parts and pieces to really learn of the running back game. That's the same way I felt about Miles Sanders. It was a really tough evaluation for me because I couldn't put my – there's a lot of great stuff going on, but it just seemed like he was always the best athlete on the field. So maybe never quite had to hone in some of those nuances of the running back position. And then you saw, just like you were saying with coaching – Philly got a hold of him. Their running backs, he was – Miles Sanders was not good to start the season. Running backs all went away, and then the running back coach and all the other coaches got a hold of him, and you saw such growth 
out of Miles Sanders last year. So I, I think you're absolutely right as far as coaching, which I don't think enough people put stock into going into the situations and the coaching and, and, and the scheme and all that stuff that you play with is, is so critical in these guys' development in the next stage of their game. And I just want to say one more thing. Akers had every reason, every built-in excuse to phone it in in 2019, right? Or like, transfer. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to phone it in. This team is garbage. I'm getting killed. And he just went out there and, I mean, I'm very impressed with the numbers that he put up. And, I yeah. mean, he was – I know it's just raw data, but 300 yards less rushing than Clyde edwards Lair on the worst offensive line in college football. I mean, it's I, I was very impressed with with what he did this season. Very impressed by by Akers. 